when an entrepreneur is thinking about hiring a director of marketing, you know, the first thing we do is say, hey, uh, why, don't, why don't you talk to these two directors of marketing in our portfolio or in our past portfolio where we know that we know that they were good, right? Uh, and that helps the entrepreneur calibrate. Welcome back to another episode of the Growth and Scaling Podcast. Today, we are working with someone who is has built a business around helping businesses grow and scale, which is always fun. Steve, will you tell us who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'm, I'm the co-founder of Growth Street Partners. We're a $200 million growth equity firm based in San Francisco. At Growth Street, we make, at, at growth Street we make minority growth investments in founder-owned and led businesses running vertical SaaS and tech-enabled services companies. Typically, they have nice. one to five million of annual recurring revenue. Uh, we partner with the founders uh, at, that are from industry, typically people who live the, yeah. the people who live the problem their business is now solving. Uh, we call yeah. this we call this founder market fit, which is really a proxy for product market fit. They're experts in their field. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're they're experts in their field, and we're the uh, experts in helping these founders at this stage grow faster and with less risk. Love it. Love it. I mean, it totally makes sense. And uh, I, I think that you're targeting people who are post-launch. They got revenue coming in the door. They're looking for what to do next. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, they, they know they have something that's working, but they haven't quite figured out how to scale it. And that's where we uh, come in and help them with some uh, real uh, tactical help. I love it. Uh, now, this is a, this is you are like a perfect guest for this podcast because that's who we're talking to. That's that's my target as well. And, and as we talk to people who are in this stage of growth, like a lot of them feel like, hey, I'm generating revenue. Um, surely I'm doing things right. Why do I need someone to tell me what to do next? What What is your response to an attitude like that? Or a, I'm sure you see this a lot, but but how do you how do you kind of see that and how do you help them? Yeah, I think a lot of the times uh, entrepreneurs actually uh, feel pretty lonely. And uh, some Agreed. of the more competent ones think that they've got it all figured out. Uh, but, you know, in a, in a cold, dark place, sometimes they wonder, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. They wonder if they really, truly have it figured out. And uh, we can be a great sounding board for them because we have all this experience, all these portfolio companies yeah. uh, where we can say, oh, geez, you know, these two people have gone through this same issue before. Or right. uh, this this person went through it and they totally messed it up, and right, here's how right. not to mess it up, you know. And and this 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 woman, she figured it out, you yeah. know. Why don't you go? Why don't you go talk to her? Uh, and so it's, it's a really uh, uh, a nice way to be a well uh, uh, an experienced and well educated uh, sounding board, hopefully. I love it. So you're leaning into your community that you're building of of portfolio companies. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, Love it. You know, Love it. Yeah, when, yeah. When when it, when an entrepreneur is thinking about hiring a director of marketing, yeah, you know, the first thing we do is say, hey, uh, why don't why don't you talk to these two directors of marketing in our portfolio or in our past portfolio, where yeah. we know that we know that they were good, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And that helps the entrepreneur calibrate. And so we've developed a whole process for like how to uh, make sure that they don't stub their toe. I you love know, it as many times as they would otherwise. I love it. You know, a lot of people are scared at, at the point where they realize that they've got a business working and they aren't exactly sure what to do next, but they know they need they know they need money, but they don't know really how to raise the money and they don't know how to get strategic money. How do they find someone like you? I mean, what what is the process that you see from from a lender from a uh, I guess what do you call yourself? I mean, you, you, yep. you help them, you got a portfolio of companies you're investing in. How do you find these companies? What, what do you speak to them? How do you speak to them? Yeah, well, so I think uh, it, it really all starts with uh, founding or excuse me, finding founders from industry. Right. right? So what we're, what we're looking for is uh, somebody that uh, spent a career in a particular end market and, and the problem that their business uh, is now solving that problem uh, found them. They didn't, I see. Go, they, didn't, I see. they didn't go. They didn't go searching uh, for a problem. I think a lot of venture capitalists out there are looking for 
the smartest person that can go find a problem and go figure it out. Right. Uh, for us, right. it's like, you know, um, uh, Mike Martin, the founder of Hotel Effectiveness, he worked for IHG for a long time. And he right. saw the uh, labor issue that his business now solves. And so yeah. we look for those attributes. That's cool. And those, people, those people have deep customer empathy. Right. Uh, but they right. usually don't. They usually haven't uh, experienced scaling a SaaS business before. And so right. that's where our partnership is really uh, valuable, right? We, we, uh, we have seen that before. And so we can be really complimentary. And so we're, just, we're looking for that, uh, that match of uh, experience and skill sets. I like it. So, so what do you do for them? Are, are you bringing them money? Are you bringing them community? Like, what is it that you're doing to actually help them? I mean, uh, I think the answer is yes. You know, so we're, we're doing all of that. Uh, right. You know, we, uh, they definitely get money. Uh, you know, so one, one you know, if for every investment we make, you know, maybe 50, 60% of it is going on the balance sheet. Right. Uh, and the balance is uh, liquidity uh, to the founder, to the, uh, the early investors, things like that. Um, right. Right. And so we're, def we're definitely putting growth capital on the balance sheet. Uh, right. And then we're definitely introducing them to our uh, founder community so that they can uh, uh, learn from them. Uh, and, and frankly, they can learn from, from this new founder. Uh, right. And then we do, we do a lot of the basic stuff, right? Like we're helping them recruit the team. We're helping them put in place the systems and processes to be able to scale. Uh, right. we're, we're getting them the data that they need to be uh, successful so that you need to get all of your prospects yeah. You know, into your uh, CRM, you need to get all the attributes about them, and you need to be able to figure out a way to shoot fish in a barrel. A hundred percent, you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, this is this is fascinating because a lot of to your point, um, I love your avatar. I, I love who you're going after here because these people literally, in many cases, accidentally started this business because they just needed someone to help them fix this problem. And and when you find someone with that empathy and that experience in the industry you know they're not just trying to come up with an idea out of the back of their, their head saying, oh, this yeah. would be cool if someone did this. It's solving a problem, but they really don't have the experience of running and operating a business. Is that right? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we'll come across entrepreneurs where they've done it a few times, but they, they've still, they've still yeah. come from uh, industry. But like our view is that uh, it's incredibly hard to scale a business from a couple million to 10, 20, 30, 40 million. That, it is. that, that is a extraordinarily difficult uh, process. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I've never once in my entire career seen it be a straight line, right? <laughs> it goes up and down and sideways yes. and all over the place. All over. And uh, the domain knowledge and the real passion for what they're doing and uh, the like having a non-monetary goal where they're, you know, it's like, as I said, Mike Martin coming out of industry, he's desperate to improve his end market, right? He loves yeah, his customers. Yeah. He loves his industry. Yeah. And that allows you to navigate that non-linear path, right? Right. Um, it, it, Cause you got to have a lot of grit and you got to have a lot of passion uh, yes, to get do. through. Yeah. Yes, you do. Especially when you're trying to do it on your own. And, and and I'm imagining that you probably pick businesses up that are at all stages of growth. I mean, you mentioned the one to five million, but you also got to consider there's some people that have higher ticket items that are in that that 20, 30, 40, 50 million revenue that are still figuring out the same problem as the two million dollar guy. It's just they have a larger yeah. ticket item. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure uh, that there are those situations for us. We're extremely focused on this stage. Right. So we. Cool. Uh, we want, we want to make sure that a company, uh, you know, has call it, uh, as I said, one to 5 million of revenue, maybe 20 to 50 employees because yeah, that's a good uh, that size. Stage, yeah. That, that, uh, stage of development is really unique where we believe that a a great founder, uh, can almost single-handedly get a business from zero to a couple million in revenue. Agreed. Right? Just by sheer yeah. will. <laughs> Just by sheer will. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If they're willing to devote their entire life, all their money, everything yeah. to doing that, then they can do it, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the tricky part is then getting to this point where, hey, can I recruit in great people? Yeah. You know, yeah. 
can I, am I willing to put in place a, a system and a process for scaling yeah. where I'm not going to be the hero, right? I'm totally. not going to swoop in and get the big deal. Totally. And we just, uh, through our experience, uh, we've, we've uh, gained a lot of lessons along the way for how to help the entrepreneur uh, get right. to that point. Right, right, right. I love it. I love it. I, and I think that you're exactly right to target this market because, you know, every founder kind of gets in their head, hey, I'm doing it. I, I'm making money. But but they get stuck in that one to five area yeah. because because that's as far as their tentacles reach. I mean, you've only got yeah. two arms and 10 fingers. And, and yeah. when you can when you stop touching certain areas, sometimes that means that that area stops getting any attention. But yeah. but it's that it's helping them get out of that where they're not touching any of it except for the leadership. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, the way the analogy that we use is that uh, at, at when we invest, the entrepreneurs are kind of like bumblebees, right? <laughs> they're they're going from plant to plant, right? So they go from they focus on sales, and yeah. sales goes well, and then they fly over to marketing, and then yep. marketing goes well, and then they fly, you know. And, and totally. you can't be on you can't be on five flowers at once, you nope. know. Uh, and so if we can help them uh, figure out how to hover above the flowers and get their you know directors or VPs of the different functional areas and put yes. in place a process where uh, th they're going to be informed of the things that are going on, but they're not actually going right. to do them, right? Right. Um, right. Right. And uh, that's a pretty incredible moment, right? Because uh, when we invest, the entrepreneur can't take a vacation, right? Yeah. And, and if they do, they've got their laptop open, you know, uh, the All whole the time, time, right? Uh, stop, and, stop talking to my wife. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so if we can help them figure out a way to be able to take a vacation and to close their laptop, yeah. right. Then, uh, uh, we're going to get them to this, uh, a point in their maturation where the key person risk is really reduced. Right. right? And if right, we can right. reduce the key person risk, the value of that company goes way up, right? Not just because totally. they're bigger, not just because they have scale, but uh, a, an acquirer or an investor can say, oh, you know, Todd could get hit by a bus right. and the business still works, right? So the risk right. goes down, the value goes up. And, and if we get to that crazy event, right? Yeah, we have a friend. We have a friend for life because uh, totally. the entrepreneur is like, "Wow, I got to go on vacation. I got to close my my laptop, and oh wow, things you know, didn't die. I sold my business for a lot of money. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Uh, so no, it's just it's a, it's a really fun phase of the business for us, and uh, we get to be a meaningful part of uh, this leg of the journey. I am so glad you're here, and I just wanted to take a few seconds to tell you about a program that we have assembled with a lot of our podcast guests and a lot of people who are listening to the show who are feeling the same way that they do. There's a recurring theme. You'll hear a lot of these founders talk about, I couldn't have done it without my team. I couldn't have done it without a, a support group of peers. I couldn't have done it without having someone to talk to that understood my feeling of isolation as an operator of my business. You see, you're not alone. It is hard running a business, and it's even harder when you know you can't express all your deepest concerns and frustrations with your executive team. It makes them nervous, it gets them scared. You don't want scared people on your executive team. So where do you turn? The Captain's Council is where you turn. The Captain's Council it is an organization that we are put together with podcast guests, as well as people who are listening who are in the same boat. You see, peers are the only ones that can give you the type of empathy, the type of advice that only a founder or operator know and understand. Go check it out at captainscouncil.com. I know you're gonna love what you see there. We have put together an organizational structure that has small group settings, a global community of founders and operators, as well as monthly and quarterly in-person events. You're going to love what you see there. I can't wait for you to check it out and enjoy the rest of this episode. That really is a great, that it really is a great spot to be. I, I, I'll never forget. Uh, I was, uh, during, during COVID, I actually got COVID about a year into COVID and, and I got the respiratory one where I was, I literally got hospitalized. Yeah. You know, I was out oh, for the man. count for like a month 
And I was so nervous because I just launched a bit a new a new operation at the beginning of COVID, and I was so scared that everything was just going to be gone when I got back. Fortunately, my experience paid off, and when I got back, none of my clients even knew I was gone. <laughs> That's the best. That's the best. It was the best. I had a whole yeah. month out of the picture, and all my clients were still there making their payments, and my business yeah. still operated. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful. Your if your family listens to this, they're gonna force you to close your <laughs> laptop on the next vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, now when you come into these situations, you know, it it's always exciting for a business founder to be generating positive revenue. It's more exciting when they don't have to be touching everything. What are some of those key benchmarks? Uh, I guess one thing take a step back. What are some red flags that you see? When, when you see a business um, that's, that's in that launch mode and, and they're yeah. not sure if they're out of it or not, um, maybe not even red flags, but warning signs that, hey, it's working, but I got to yeah. figure this next thing out. What, what do you kind of say? What are some typical things you see? Yeah. Okay. So two things that we really look for, uh, uh, what, what, and these aren't necessarily red flags or uh, yellow flags, but they're just, they're sure. flags. You sure. know, uh, so uh, one is uh, we want to see if there's anyone on the team that we think is as smart or smarter than the founder, Love right? Uh, which is kind of a crazy thing to do. But like, if you walk into a room and you you meet the team and you're like, wow, these are all a bunch of dodos, you know, right. uh, that's not a great sign, right? Uh, right. If the entrepreneur is able to recruit in uh, a really smart individual, then sure. you're like, wait a second, that person decided to take this risk to start this teeny, you know, to go work at this right. teeny company. Right. They must know something, right? Yeah. Uh, and that that's really important. And then the second one is around uh, sales reps. So yeah. the, the founders that do uh, all of the selling themselves, essentially. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a real red flag to us. It is. Right? Yeah. If, if, if they are able to get even just one sales rep to be productive yeah. and that person doesn't have like the founding of the business in their, in their blood, you know, right. Right. It's really powerful because that says like, Hey, wait a second, this transfer of knowledge, this transfer right. has happened, right. It's been done once. And all we have to do is clone that, yeah. you know, and we need to figure out, well, what was it that they did to hire that person, to train that person? Uh, what systems are they using? What uh, keywords are they using? Totally. You know, things like that. And and those are two things that we really look for. Love it. Th those are great things to to make people aware of. And for those of you listening, you know, if you're in this transition stage from launch to growth, there are some really key things you need to be thinking about. And And I'm so grateful that Steve's touched on a lot of them, but you need to be aware that scaling is much different than launching. And scaling indicates that it's time to hone in. It's time to focus in on some things and stop being the solution for everybody and yeah. really identify of the of the people you've served so far, which ones do you want to serve more and which ones do you want to serve less? Steve, yeah. how do you work through that? Because I see yeah. a lot of people still getting stuck on serving the wrong clients and it wastes all their time. How, how do you yeah. work through that with people? Yeah, that uh, Todd, that's an amazing question. Uh, we we talk about uh, hiring backwards. Right? Interesting. So that, so the, the the average entrepreneur, or maybe the below average entrepreneur, yeah, uh, uh, hires forwards. Right? They're always like, well, you know, if I just hired a VP of sales, yeah, you know, uh, or I just hired a VP of marketing, yeah, that would be the uh, the solution. Right. Right. And and we say, well, wait a second. You don't even know who you want to sell to yet. You don't yeah. know who you want to market to yet. Right. Like, let's go figure out who are our best customers, who are our worst customers yeah. and what do they look like? Yeah. And, uh, you know, what 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 attributes do they have? And then yeah. let's go find let's go find as many of our uh, lookalikes, you know, our best com our best customer totally. lookalike. Let's go find as totally. many as we can. And then once we have all the fish in the barrel, right? Yep. Let's figure out, okay, what does a VP of marketing look like that's going to be best suited for these fish? I love right? it. What does a VP of sales look like that's best suited for these fish? 
And so we always we always start uh, with looking at the customer base first, yeah. not uh, uh, leaning in. So that that actually, you know, to your last question about uh, red or yellow flags, yeah. Like when an entrepreneur says to us like, "Oh, geez, all I need is a VP of sales," we're like, <laughs> "All right, uh, maybe not. The, maybe not the entrepreneur that's perfect for us." Right, right, right. That is a red flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it it, it, it it might be a good it might be a good indicator if they've done all if they put in place all these building blocks totally that, and they're ready for the VP of sales. But oftentimes, at you know one or two or three million of revenue, they're not quite ready. Well, and and even to the point of this conversation, you know, we started off by asking you who's your who's your avatar, who do you like to serve. You knew exactly who you like to serve, and and yeah. even when I tried to push you into another category, you said no, no, we just like this one. Like yeah. that is indicative of a company that is going to grow and scale is when you know the person you want to serve. And, and yeah. I, I just think so often we, we uh, when we're launching, it's like, hey, you're going to give me some money. I will help you. Let me just help anybody and everybody. But when it comes yeah. right down to it, we all know that let's say the last 20 clients we onboarded, I can stand, I can't stand these five yeah. people, but I love these three. How do you get yeah. more of those three and less of those five, right? Yeah, yeah. That uh, that whole process or that mentality yeah. is paramount to success, right? The the, the best uh, board page, you know, in a board deck I've ever seen, yeah, uh, was the first page of one of our portfolio companies, and the founder the uh, put it in first page, and the sub or the the title of the page was "What We're Not Going to Talk About Today." Uh, <laughs> And it was awesome. It was <laughs> awesome. And, and that mentality of like, hey, we need to be really focused. We need to say who are our customers and who are not going to be our right. customer. Exactly. You know, in, our, in, our, in our product, what's going to be like a feature in our product and what is not, you know, like right. uh, where, where are we going to partner as opposed right. to build, you know? And those, those right. that mentality uh is is crazy valuable and he and he don't need to look any further than steve jobs who came back into apple and said why do we have 300 products we need 10 right yes yeah totally yeah hone in uh, become the expert yeah. dial a delivery of how you're going to do your product or service and then just lean in on it all the way this is so yeah. awesome what well, what a great conversation steve i didn't even get a chance to ask about your business and i want to spend just a couple minutes because I think there's a lot that you've shared that is so applicable to everyone listening. How have you been able to apply these to your business? And, and just give us a little insight. Like, do you eat your own cake? Is this something yeah. that you are, are really implementing yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Growth Street is a small investment firm based in San Francisco. We have, call it 10 employees. So we're, yeah. we're at a growth stage too. You know, we've been in business, uh, call it seven years. Uh, yeah. and the, 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 the people grow with the funds and we're on our second fund now. Uh, awesome. first one, was, first one was 70 million, second funds, 130 million. Uh, you know, third fund will raise in another year or two. Uh, good for you. The, 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 thank you. Yeah. The, you know, the trick, you know, uh, uh, for us has been about building the team, which is, you know, exactly what the trick is. Uh, for our portfolio companies too, right? Right. And right. The, the the thing that we think about for our portfolio companies and for Growth Street is like people that want to join uh, smaller firms or or uh, startups or scale ups, uh, they're they're generally risk takers, right? right? Like they're not gonna they're not gonna go work for this big huge corporation. They no. want to take a little risk. They want to bid on themselves. Yep. Uh, risk, from my perspective, is like uh, volatility, right? It's like uh, you can have uh, a fantastic employee and you can have a terrible employee, right? Yeah. Those ri the, the risk associated with that process, right? And so figuring out how to uh, make sure that you you uh, eliminate those very bad employees and you really figure out what uh, how, how you identified those great ones, right? Totally. And there, totally. there are little tricks over time that we figured out at Growth Street and we've uh, also helped our portfolio companies uh, figure out. So like for picking entrepreneurs, one thing that we really like is like an entrepreneur that 
by their nature as a risk taker because they started this business. But yeah, maybe, maybe they have an MBA. Maybe they have a law degree. Uh, maybe they worked at a big company where they saw some structure and saw what a, right. how a well-run business is. Right. Uh, and so finding that balance of, hey, uh, somebody that's willing to take the risk for, you know, to go join Growth Street or go start a company or go work at a small company, balanced with that structured experience, that combination can be uh, uh, really exciting. And we, we've had a lot of success at Growth Street with that, too. I love it. You know, and in closing, I, I, I would love to get your take on this because you've mentioned a few times you know, the aspect of the community, you know, you, you talked about how you love to have your portfolio companies kind of interact with each other and, and ask those difficult questions. How much of a benefit do you see having a community like that as a resource? How does that help those companies get past that, that transition stage? Yeah. Uh, so uh, every entrepreneur thinks their challenges are unique. So, uh, and in some <laughs> yes. ways, in some ways they are. Yeah. But in a lot of ways, you know, uh, uh, the companies at this scale, this stage, yeah. uh, they, they're, they're all seeing, uh, you know, things that are uh, somewhat similar. It's like, you know, they, they rhyme. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, being able to connect the dots uh, for those entrepreneurs is, is really valuable. So, like, you know, we have a few HR tech uh, uh, related businesses and somebody, yeah. you know, one of them raises their hand and says, we're thinking about the ADP marketplace, you know, we we're wondering, and it's like, well, geez, this other entrepreneur thought about the ADP marketplace. Why don't we set up a call and you yeah. can talk about like the issues, you know, right. the, the opportunities and that just accelerates uh, their development. And there, there totally. are, you know, uh, I can't tell you the number of times there have been uh, situations like that. It's just an infinite number and an I entrepreneur, operating in isolation uh, yeah. is just inherently going to move uh, more slowly. Slowly and make more mistakes that they could have easily Definitely. avoided if they had asked somebody for advice, right? Yeah, yeah our, exactly. Our, our motto here is grow faster with less risk, right? Love it. Uh, so uh, I like make that a lot. Mistakes. Yeah. I like that a lot. Steve, this has been a fantastic conversation. Uh, for those listening, um, I highly recommend you look at Steve's organization. Growth Street is an amazing place where people like you can come to not only raise the money, but also be a member of a community. Uh, you know, I'm a huge, huge fanatic about community and how that can affect your ability to grow and scale with less bruises, as you mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I think that as you consider your path forward, really look into some of these options. You know, th there are some great, great people like Steve who understand your pain, who understand what you're trying to do. And, and I highly recommend you dig into this and take a look. Steve, thank you so much for being a part of our conversation today. Is there anything you want to leave? Any last tidbits of advice or, or ways that people can connect? Uh, yeah, so uh, I really appreciate you inviting me on, Todd. And uh, uh, you can reach me uh, uh, through our website, uh, growthstreetpartners.com, or Love you can it. email me directly at uh, steve at growthstreetpartners.com. Uh, I, I'm really excited about what you're building. I think uh, some of the stuff you're doing around uh, the Captain's Council is Thank you. Uh, really exciting. And our entrepreneurs, we always encourage them to build this community. And you know, a lot of them have used uh, other uh, uh, networks or groups. And it's not they're not purpose built for this stage. Right. And right, uh, right. what what you're what you're doing with this podcast and with what you're doing with that uh, community is really exciting. And that's. That's why I wanted to join it. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And for those listening, just do us both a favor. Don't go it alone. You've got to yeah. tie yourself to some people who can guide you. So congrats on the launch. Move forward together and move forward stronger. Thank you so much, Steve, for being a part right. of it today. Awesome. Thank you for having me. What a fun conversation. For those of you who are in growth mode or are in scale-up mode, this is a fantastic group you need to talk to. You may have mentioned, you may have heard or noticed that Steve mentioned the Captain's Council. The Captain's Council is something that I've put together. Our, they are sponsoring this podcast. And the whole purpose, the intention of that is to build a community of founders and operators who are in growth and scale up mode. We're not looking to, to have everyone come in and show off their Ferraris and talk about how cool they are. No, 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 no. There's other communities for that. 
Captain's Council is designed around those who are actively operating, actively in growth and scale up mode. And we put you in pods of other founders and operators in the same boat. People in that growth scale up mode who are ready to rock and roll, they just get a little bit confused as to what direction they need to point their ship. So become a member of the Captain's Council today. We promise that you will find the type of input and feedback you've been looking for from people who are currently in the same boat you're in, operating, growing, and scaling just like you, who have likely run into the same challenges that you've faced all right now already. So they're able to take care of you, guide you, direct you together as a peer group, and be part of our global community, which participates in all sorts of good stuff. So check out thecaptainscouncil.com. We appreciate you being here on this episode of the Growth and Scaling Podcast. And we hope that you join us, like, share, subscribe. Your support means everything to us. Help us know who you want us to reach out to, to interview, to get on the show so that you can gain a little bit of their wisdom and insights as you grow and scale your business. Thanks so much. And we look forward to talking to you later.